Siding with the U.S. Empire is always wrong. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. If you get the feeling that all this Ukraine flag-waving is one more vapid mainstream propaganda initiative used to manufacture consent for an agenda that has nothing to do with what you're being told, it's because that is exactly what is happening. In this war, Russia has killed many Ukrainians, and Ukraine has killed many Russians, and the U.S. Empire has killed many Ukrainians and Russians. It's nuts that there are still grown adults who think Putin invaded Ukraine for no other reason than because he is evil and hates freedom. Focus less on the Azov Battalion and more on the fact that the U.S. deliberately provoked this war with the goal of toppling Moscow and is threatening all our lives with increasingly reckless brinkmanship against a nuclear superpower. People who promote a U.S.-NATO war with Russia are more dangerous and depraved than racists, homophobes, transphobes, and anti-Semites, and they should be treated accordingly. They are the most dangerous extremists on Earth. This should be completely uncontroversial and obvious to literally everyone. More Americans know Marge Simpson's sister's favorite TV show then know their government is waging a deliberately provoked and profoundly dangerous proxy war against a nuclear superpower. This is because mainstream Western media, all of it, is propaganda. Everyone should be able to say whatever the fuck they want about a proxy war instigated by the world's most powerful government that could very easily end up sparking a nuclear war. If you're on the side of the U.S. Empire on any issue, you are on the wrong side. This doesn't mean the other side is always necessarily in the right. It just means a globe-spanning empire that's held together by lies, murder, and tyranny will always be in the wrong. Yes, it is that simple. It must be the most soul-destroying thing in the world to go to journalism school, study hard, graduate in front of your whole family, work your ass off building up a resume, get a steady job, and then find yourself writing hit pieces about disobedient YouTubers for the Daily Beast. Twitter is nature's way of dispelling the common misconception that liberals are smart. If I was the world's biggest narcissist, I'd probably try to become the richest person on earth and do everything I can to make sure everyone's always talking about me and convince everyone I'm going to save the world with my technology so I get a weird cult to worship me. Twitter being biased in favor of one nation's government is vastly more consequential than Twitter being biased in favor of one U.S. political party. So far, we're only seeing emphasis on the latter, indicating that Twitter will continue functioning as a U.S. propaganda censorship apparatus it should probably get more attention that it's effectively impossible to have any kind of major media company in the U.S. and not have it be absorbed into the U.S. propaganda machine. The Assange case is very simple. The most powerful government in the world is trying to criminalize journalism about its nefarious behavior anywhere in the world. You can sum it up in a breath. It is only narrative spin and smears that makes it seem like a big, complicated thing. Empires haven't disappeared as the world grows more conscious of the evils of empire. They've just gotten sneakier and bitchier. They used to just nail you to a piece of wood in public if you defied them. Now they've got to go through this whole deceitful lawfare process just to kill one journalist. Empires used to just openly conquer foreign territories because they want to own them. Then it became about civilizing them. Now they pretend it's about freedom and democracy, and they don't even make you change your flag to theirs. Empires used to exterminate entire towns who dared to disobey them. Now they have to launch these giant, bitchy propaganda operations to psychologically manipulate populations into hating their enemies. Empires are just really sneaky, bitchy, gossipy, backstabby versions of what they've always been. They're just as oppressive and violent, 
But the fact that there are more eyes on their behavior now means they have to be so much more manipulative and covert about what they do. The more visible things become, the more hard work and cleverness is required to run an empire. That's why they're working so hard to make things less visible via censorship, propaganda, Silicon Valley algorithm manipulation, and the criminalization of journalism. The biggest mistake you can make is to trust that your leader's actions would seem more sensible and appropriate if you knew what they know and understood what they understand. The wars really are as horrific and pointless as they appear. The escalations in tyranny and exploitation really are as bad as they seem. It's not that you don't understand what you're looking at. It's that you're not a sociopath. Your thoughts and opinions matter. Know how you can tell? Because every single day, the world's most powerful people pour an immense amount of wealth and energy into trying to manipulate them. When a loved one is very self-destructive, you can't control their fate. At some point, you've just got to let them make their mistakes and hope something in them wakes up before they wind up dead. That's pretty much how you've got to be with the entire human species at this point.